Let's talk about flooring. Hey guys, this is Coop from GarageRoomReviews.com. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, you ought to sign up. If you haven't subscribed for the YouTube channel, you ought to subscribe. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, you ought to follow me. If you haven't liked us on Facebook, you ought to follow us. If you haven't been to the website, you ought to go to the website. Okay. All right, now that you know that the plug's over, let's talk about what I want to talk about today. So if you want to do some of those things, feel free to do them. If you don't, fine. Uh, but today I want to talk about flooring because more than just about any question I get from people that are starting home gyms, starting garage gyms, it's like, Coop, I want to start a garage gym, but I don't want to break my foundation. I don't want to hurt you know, the floor. I don't want to make a lot of noise because I have a baby that's sleeping. And actually, I do have a baby that's sleeping right now. And I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment in just a couple minutes. But this is a question I get a lot. And so really, I want to help you find the right flooring that you need for your garage gym or your home gym or wherever you're putting your gym and do it in a manner that isn't crazy expensive. Now starting a home gym isn't the cheapest thing in the world, okay? It actually can be kind of expensive, especially if you build a gym, you know, with this kind of equipment and, you know, you buy the nicest stuff and things like that. But you can do it on a value basis. One thing that I think is important though is you don't go over the top with your flooring. You want to make it so the floor, one, protects the ground, so protects your foundation or things like that. Um, but two, also doesn't make it so it's completely dirty, gives it a good look, things like that. But you don't want to be going out and spending an insane amount of money on exercise you know, flooring. Because if you go out and just you know, look online or you go to your local sports store and say, I want flooring that's for exercising on, then it's going to be really expensive. But you don't need to use that expensive of flooring. This is the flooring you need to get. This is one of the easiest, simplest videos I can do for you. Okay, so the flooring you need to get is this right here. This beautiful flooring that you see here is the best flooring for your dollar, okay? This flooring is called stall mats, okay? If you're searching for a home gym or you're trying to find you know, mats for your gym, then what you need to look for is horse stall mats. Yes, I said that right. You want to find mats that are designed for horses to stand on. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, if you may have noticed, yes, I sold my dumbbells and getting new ones. They're on the way. But what you notice here is I have some heavy ass dumbbells sitting on the floor here, okay? And these are just resting on the stall mats. But what happens is that's not so big of a deal for your flooring, okay? Doesn't really matter if those are just resting there. You're not really going to hurt it. I even have, you know, my whole weight stack over here. You see it right here. Okay, that's probably, you know, who knows how much weight, okay? Probably over 5,000, 6,000 pounds, okay? It's a lot of weight, but it's just resting there. That's not gonna hurt the ground. What's gonna hurt your ground is the dynamic movements. It's doing clean jerks and snatches and dropping it from overhead. Yeah. yeah. It's doing heavy deadlifts with metal plates and dropping them from your, you know, waist height. Things like that, that's what's gonna hurt your floor. So you want something that's thick enough to absorb the shock, also made of a good material that can absorb that shock, um, but it's also gonna provide a firm foundation for you to lift on. What you see right here is not a good foundation for you to lift on. These are sports tiles. Um, before I bought this house, the person that had this put these in, okay, and they're okay, they're kind of comfortable, things like that, but for working out on, this is not ideal. And these are actually sold as exercise tiles, okay? Let me just pull one up for you. Okay, so you see they're in this simple shape here, but what you notice is it's a very, you know, thin, but also easy to squish formula that's used, plastic, rubber, whatever's used, it's crappy, okay? This stuff sucks. You don't want that stuff, okay? You don't want a foundation in which you're, you know, break your legs. Break em. Break your legs. squirming on. It's the reason that you're not supposed to work out in running shoes or to lift in running shoes, things like that. You don't want that crap, okay? What you want 
is a solid rubber stall mat. And that's what these are. Okay, so just gonna show you real quick. This is a cutout of one of the stall mats. That is three quarter inch thick, okay? That's a thick piece of rubber, okay? Those of you that are worried about hurting your foundation, is this gonna protect your foundation? Well, that's a difficult thing to say because everybody has a difficult, different foundation. Some people's slabs are thicker, thinner. But I think for most people, if you're using the right equipment and not just going crazy, you're not gonna hurt your foundation if you're lifting on these, okay? This thing is not only thick, it's also heavy, but it's firm. Like, there's no squishing this. I don't care if you can close a number four Captain's a Crush gripper, you're not gonna be able to squish this bad boy. To show you the comparison, this is a typical exercise tile, and then this is a horse stall mat. Not only are these better, but these are a lot cheaper. The next question is, Cooper, should I build a platform, or should I, you know, just, lift on the floor. Listen, I would prefer a platform, especially if I'm dropping from overhead. That said, I drop from overhead on this all the time. I don't have any cracks or any issues like that with my foundation. I didn't at the old house I lived at. You know, I haven't had any problems, but that's not to say that you could have problems. I would rather err on the side of, you know, safety than not. So, I would say that a platform is gonna be helpful if you're dropping from overhead, okay? And the platform that I use is the Rogue Deadlift platform. I don't really like doing many Olympic lifts on that because if you drop them and you hit these band pegs, your shins are gone, trust me, I've had it happen. Okay, but that platform's a little expensive. You can make a DIY one. So finally, and I know this is how some of you are, you're like, I don't wanna wake up my baby, my wife, I work out early in the morning, um, I don't want to make any noise for my neighbors, I live in a duplex, I don't want to hurt the floor at all, what are my options? I've got two options for you, one is okay and one is just absolutely out of this world awesome. Your first option are these thug rugs, okay, they're called thug rugs, thug mats, it's basically a whole lot of chopped up rubber, probably from tires that's been compressed together, similar to like a high temp bumper plate, and then added a rubber top. These work okay. They deaden the sound some. They also make the weight bounce up higher, um, but they don't, they don't do a crazy amount. These are really designed, I think, for Atlas stones. They do really well for Atlas stones, um, but for the price, there's just a lot of better options out there. And then here is your best option. These are called pound pads. Pound pads sent me these to review. I'm currently working on a review for the site. But these things work better than anything I've ever used, ever seen, anything ever, okay? These are the best, no doubt about it. They're expensive, but they work. And if you're trying to stop the noise from happening because you wanna lift and your neighbors are complaining or other reasons that I mentioned before, then you gotta get these. There's nothing that compares. These are basically like one of those really heavy, um, like three-sided, you know, plyo boxes that Rogue sells that are basically made of foam. That's what these are, okay? These are just made for dropping weights on. And to show you how great these are, I'm gonna load up a barbell with, you know, 315, 405, somewhere around there. I'm gonna drop it from here. My baby is currently sleeping. I'm gonna put a camera in his room next to his crib. If I were to drop this, Without these, it would shake the entire house. Everybody would wake up, okay? Even my neighbors probably, okay? It's just loud, okay? But with these, cross my fingers. Come on, pound pad, but I don't think this is gonna wake him up. Let's try it. So this is around 375 pounds. I'm gonna go put, the, I don't know why I'm whispering right now. I'm gonna go put the um, camera in my, <coughs> in my son's room just to show you that he's sleeping while I do this. Oh, my wife's gonna kill me. So I placed the camera, it's in his crib. I'm gonna drop this, let's see what happens. This is either gonna be an awesome idea or just the worst idea in the world. Let's see, that was, that was quieter than I thought it'd be. All right, so that was like the greatest experiment ever. <laughs> Didn't see 
any movement. I just rewatched the video, didn't see anything happen. I could kind of hear it in the background that it was dropped, but it was it was like hardly there. He definitely didn't hear it. Oh, that was awesome. So I think their tagline should be "Doesn't wake a sleeping baby," you know, something along those lines. But pound pads, these things are awesome. Okay, they don't make any noise and they're super heavy. They're way heavier than you would think. So, but that's kind of my thoughts on flooring. If you have any questions or you have any advice for flooring or people looking for a home gym, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time. Peace.